open with me in your Bible to the book of Psalm 20. And I want to teach, this is not the main message, this is a mini message. Powerful nonetheless. I want to teach a new mini message series called Remember All Your Offerings. As we get ready to uh, em embark upon another week, and for many of us that means a another opportunity to sow seed into the kingdom of God, I want to allow this teaching and these scriptures to set our focus. In Psalm 20, stanza 1 through 5, it says this. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice, Selah. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. We will rejoice in your salvation and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Specifically today, I want to ask the question, does God remember? There's a part in this passage that talks about, may he remember all your offerings. So in starting this new miniseries today called Remember All Your Offerings, in this I want to challenge you from the Word of God to remember all your offerings. We've recently as a congregation decided as we prepare to buy land and build our buildings, before we start a building fund, we are starting a seed fund by sowing into other churches and ministries into their lands and into their buildings. Before we, quote unquote, raise one dollar to raise the house of God for Faith Family Church, we are going to receive seed from God to sow first. When you talk about sowing and saving, which is most important? Uh, I reached out to our realtor this week to uh, find out how much is this plot of land that's not too far from us uh, on Longenbaugh and Barker Cypress. It's 5.3 acres. That's just about what we need at this point. And, and it'd be good to find out how much do we need to believe God for? You know, so, so we're going to find out, you know, she'll get back with me and let me know. You know, it, it, let's say it's a million dollars right? Which is a lot for a congregation of our size. How many of you all would know that it would take years upon years in the natural to save a million dollars? How many of y'all know that would be the case? It, it would just take years to do it. But God has a different economy. God's ways are higher than our ways. The, the world has a way that seems right to them, but the end often is the way of death. We're looking to do this debt free. Amen. And we don't have thousands upon thousands upon tens of thousands upon hundreds of thousands of dollars to go right in and to buy one of the best pieces of property in our, our area. Come on. I don't want to be behind a barn, behind a, a junkyard. Come on. I want to be in a nice spot, right? How many of y'all know that God should have the best and God's people should have the best? Amen. Well, well, God is teaching us through his word a new way of living. And that is seed, time, and harvest. That you sow a seed, give it time, and a harvest will come. So we as a, as a congregation, if you haven't caught this, for those of you that are online, we as a congregation have decided there's a church on Barker Cypress and just south of West Little York. They've started to erect the steel to build a building on a piece of land. They were in a strip mall right across from when we were in a strip mall. They're currently in a trailer, a double wide trailer having church. 
but they have a vision to, and I found out on, on their website, they have a vision to build their church debt free. And so over the last two years, I would see them scrape the land. And that's all would happen. And then a few more months would go by. Then I saw them frame up. I'm an, I'm ar, I'm an architect by um, education. And so I would see them frame up and I would begin to see and envision. They have a big uh, uh, sign on the building on the side of their trailer of the building that they want to build. Right. And so you'd see them lay the foundation and, and you'd see them begin to put up the steel and then months would pass. And it, it would just come up in my heart without knowing the ministry. I believe in my heart. It's like I, I, I believe they're doing that debt free. In other words, they didn't go to Chase Bank. They didn't go to Citibank. They didn't go to a big bank, you know, Comerica and say, hey, you know, we know we serve the God of the universe, but, you know, he's he, he's a little bit busy right now. Can you loan us the money to build him a house? They just believe that what things, whoever they desire, they believe that they receive them and they're going to have them. And so we decided before we start a savings account to save money, to buy land, to build our own buildings, we're going to put some seed in the ground. Hallelujah. We're going to find other ministries that are looking to build their buildings and we're going to take chunks of money and sow it into them. Give it time and you watch what will happen at Faith Family Church. There will be people inside Faith Family, outside of Faith Family that give tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Can I go a little bit further? Even millions of dollars. Why? Because we'll have seed in the ground. There's two things. As I'm seeking the face of God for my family, I'm also doing it for my faith family, right? Two things God's talking to me about you. As we go into 2021, God's talking to us about sowing, and he's talking to us about growing. It's time to put some seed into the ground. Well, when you talk about does God remember all your offerings? That's a very significant question. And I want to look at that for a, a, a period of time. And then we'll get into the main message after another moment of worship. God's preparing us for something special, really special. And I can sense it in my heart. It's like he's bringing, how many of y'all sense he's bringing us up to a new level? Amen. This psalm is a psalm of blessing. You know, at the end of the service, I'll have you stand up and raise a hand and I'll say, may the Lord bless you. Amen. May his countenance, may he turn his face toward you. May he bless you and keep you. Amen. May he be gracious unto you. How many of y'all know I am speaking? I'm saying, may this be. And this entire psalm is speaking blessing. He says, may, uh, may the Lord answer you in a day of trouble. May the name of the, the God of Jacob, so forth and so on. May, may, may. And I'm going to speak this over you in a moment. I'm going to speak this psalm over you in a moment as we get ready to give our offerings throughout this week. But let's look carefully uh, at these verses. Stanza one. He says, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble and may the name of the God of Jacob defend you. How many of you want the Lord to answer you when you're having trouble with something? I don't know about you. I want the Lord to answer me when I'm going through trouble, whether it be in the home or on the job or in the church or at work work wherever we are if you're having trouble putting something together may the lord answer you in a time of trouble and then he says may the lord may the god of jacob defend you now we've been studying the life of jacob on wednesday nights and if you haven't checked this out i mean it is a powerful study about the blessing the blessing of the lord will make you rich and we've been studying that well, he says here, may the God of Jacob. So for those of us that have been studying it, this speaks volumes. Jacob was, was the second recorded tither that we have in the Bible. How many of y'all know he is an individual who highly valued the blessing? 
In Psalm 20, stanza 2, it says, may he send you help from the sanctuary. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of, out of Zion. How many of you all know what should be happening? What should be happening when we come to church? We should be strengthened. Is that right? We should be helped when we come to church. And that's what he says. May the Lord help you when you come to church, help you from the sanctuary, and may he strengthen you out of Zion. Theologians say when the Bible refers to Zion, he's referring to the church. When you come to church, you should be helped and you should be strengthened. What else does it say here? May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. Do you believe that the Lord wants you to have your heart's desire? I mean, for a moment, I mean, just a moment ago, I said, write down what you would like to have. What is the desire of your heart to be able to pay for your kids college, to be able to do this and that and the other? What do you, what does your heart desire? Listen, God wants to grant you your heart's desire. And he wants you to fulfill the purpose for which you were born. Amen? Well, did you know that all of this is connected to the offerings that you give to God? Him answering, y'all didn't get any answer on that. So, amen. Him answering you in a time of trouble, right? Him being there, him granting you your heart's desire, him strengthening you at the church, him helping you from the sanctuary, each and every one of these things. What if I told you that they're all connected to your offerings? The Lord answering you in a time of trouble is is partly dependent upon your offerings. Jacob was the second recorded tither in the Bible. God defended Jacob. Why? Because Jacob honored God in a big way. If you've ever wondered, you know, how is it that a child of God can struggle in this life? It is so because God honors those that honor him. It's not a socialistic approach in the kingdom of God. If you honor God, God will honor you. If you like, if you despise God, God will like, he won't despise you. But the Bible says in 1 Samuel 2.30 that those that despise him will be lightly esteemed. Esteemed. See, this is what we as a, as a church worldwide have been missing. We are children of the king, but because we have not learned the laws of sowing and reaping, we don't honor him as we should. And therefore, we don't see him being able to show up in, in our lives as he could. So all of these are connected. Getting help from the sanctuary is connected to the offerings that you give in the sanctuary. Being strengthened when you get something out of church correlates to how strong your offerings are to the church. So let's look at Psalm 3, 20 and verse 3. Again, it says, may he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice And then it says Selah, which means pause and think about that. Now, let me ask you a question. Does God remember? Does God remember all of our offerings for this year? For example, I know at the end of this year, our accounting department will, you know, compulate all of the offerings that you've given to Faith Family Church and then send you a report as it's required by the, by the government, by the IRS, of what your annual givings to, to Faith Family Church, which is a nonprofit 501c3 organization. We will let you know how much you gave. Do you think that God knows how much you gave this year without the computer printout? <laughs> Why? Because he remembers everything, right? The only thing he doesn't remember or he chooses not to remember is your sin. Praise God. The book of Matthew chapter 10 and verse 30 says, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered or subtracted. Amen. 
How many of y'all know God knows how many hair are on your head? That's amazing. Of the billions of people on the planet, he knows when a sparrow falls from the sky, right? The very hairs of your head are numbered. So when you look at Psalm 20 and stanza 3, he says, he doth remember. This is in the Young's literal translation. To answer the question, does God remember all your offerings? Absolutely. He doth remember all your presents or all your offerings. Say it out loud. He does remember. Amen. And it's very important. God remembers. What I'm challenging you through this is that you should also remember. But notice, to to give you more than one witness of Scripture, God remembers when you give something to him. In the book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 9, there was a woman that gave a year's salary to Jesus. I want you to imagine whatever the average salary is, 50, 70, $100,000. This woman in her savings saved up one year's salary and came and gave it to Jesus in one moment of time. Can you imagine what position you would have to be in financially to give to God one year's salary from your life? It's so quiet in here. You'd have to technically what we would describe as being rich. Think about it. Most of us can't do that. I believe most of us would do that if we were in the position to do that. Most of us don't have in liquid savings a one-year salary. Why is it so hard to preach this? I know why. I know why. But I got to preach it because it's the word of God. Most of us. But if we did, it means that we have more than we need year after year and it just keeps storing up. It keeps storing up. I mean, we're not living week to week. We're not even living month to month. We've gotten to the place where we're not even living year to year. We've got next year's money this year in a liquid account. How many of y'all know that's a good position to be in? I believe that's the position God wants every one of his children to be in. He's the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. He said, your faults aren't my faults. And as a result, your ways aren't my ways. He's trying to get us to come up higher in our thinking. Then let me ask you now that you've got that. If you had a a year's wage, could you imagine yourself being able to come to the church and say, how much is that land? Here, here's $100,000 towards it. God's been good to us. We've got more than we need, Pastor. We believe in putting seed into the ground and building God's kingdom. I know that's me. And I know it's you too. Amen. Notice what this what Jesus said about this woman that gave to his ministry what was worth a full year's salary. Mark chapter 14, verse nine, it says, assuredly, I say to you that wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will be also told as a what memorial to her. That was over 2,000 years ago. God wanted this significant offering recorded and preached until Jesus returns. It was so significant, not just the, the, the quantity of it. It was the quality of that gift. It was a precious gift. It was, as it were, a part of her life savings. The Bible also says in the book of Acts chapter 10, Uh, And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? So he said to him, your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. Isn't this amazing? The Bible says here that this man, he was praying before God and his prayers came up before God. 
but also his alms. Somebody say his alms came up before God. When you give an offering to the church or a ministry that's preaching, preaching the gospel of Jesus, you are giving it to God. And he receives it. And not only does he receive it, he remembers it. Some of us, as it stands right now, we don't remember how much we gave this year. <laughs> Some of us don't remember how much we gave last week to the kingdom, last month to the kingdom. You can probably remember last week. But last month, to tally all of your offerings for last month, some of us don't remember what we gave. But God does. I know some of us do. There's a young man as a part of the ministry. He came right at the transition into this new facility. My wife and I had the privilege of sitting down with him, and he told me that he remembers all of his family's expenses for the last three years. And I really admire that about him. I mean, it stays with my, my mind. And the reason why it does is because we should be that good of stewards in, our, in the kingdom of God. Amen? And in our lives. There's another passage of scripture. It says here that uh, you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. Verse 18 says, indeed, I have all and abound and am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing unto God. Notice that this verse of Scripture, which talks about giving and receiving, when you give to God, not only does your offering amount come up to God, there's a smell that comes up with it. How does your offerings smell to God? Is it a sweet savor, an odor of a fragrant, pleasant smell, or does it stink? When you look at the kind of offerings that the people of God gave in the Old Testament, God called them out on it. In the book of Haggai and, and Malachi, they were offering unto the Lord the handicapped sheep the maimed and the blind. But then there was others that were giving him the best sheep that they had to offer. How do your offerings smell to God? Are you giving him just what's left over? When, when, after you pay everybody and God comes last, do you give him just what's left over? I'm challenging you to renew your mind and your thinking about your giving because God remembers what you give. Last one on this is Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Notice, God doesn't forget when you do something in his kingdom. Amen. God doesn't forget when you do something in his kingdom. Amen. Amen. He is not unrighteous to forget, and neither should we. As we have challenged you, my wife and I, we are believing God for an extra $1,000 to sow into this other church before we even start believing to sow into Faith Family Church. We're not going to benefit at all from the amount that comes in when we give this offering on December the 13th. And what we've, been, what we've challenged you to do is to pray before God. Get an amount in mind on what you would like to give. And remember this, when you give at a higher level, you'll receive at a higher level. Some of us have never given at certain levels. Some of us have never given $300 to God at one time. Some of us give that all the time. Some of us haven't given $500. Some of us haven't given $1,000 ever. 
What I'm asking you to do is not go into your checking account or your banking account. Believe God that within the next 28 days, the next 27 days, that a chunk of money will show up with God's name on it. That's exciting. God's got four weeks to get you a piece of money to do something with. And when it shows up, don't lose your mind and forget that that extra chunk of money came because on, the, on November 15th, you believe God for an extra $300. Uh, our dear sister told me that a, money, a piece of money showed up. She's ready already. Glory to God. Amen. She's excited about it. Believe extra money showed up. Amen. And that's what we're believing to do. God, whoo, man, there's, a, there's an anointing in this place. I know you're quiet. Amen. There is an anointing on what we're saying here. Listen. Hallelujah. God gives seed to the sower. Isn't that right? He'll give you seed to sow and bread for your food. So will you believe God and allow him to bring you up to another level in life? Amen? Amen. So the next time on next Sunday, we're going to look at how important it is for you to remember all of your offerings. Amen. I want to take this time to pray over you. Amen. Will you stand up and receive the blessing? I'm going to pray Psalm 20, 1 through 5, 1 through 4, 1 through 5 uh, over you. For those of you online, uh, obviously we've got text to give and, and different ways in which you give in the ministry. For those of you that are in person, we don't, we don't pass the offering plate. Uh, we stopped doing that a long time ago, long before coronavirus, because our faith is in God. We never want you to feel like we're saying what we're saying or doing what we're doing to get money so we could do what we want to do. No, we're saying what we're saying, doing what we're doing so that you can come up to another level in life, period. If you want to give, you can. There's some offering receptacles, you know, here in the sanctuary. There's means and ways. We've got a new church center app, which is really cool. You can give right from your church center app. You can get all your weekly chapters from our church app. You can get, praise God, all of the events. You can listen to the video messages, right? That we had a new update this week. I know I announced it last week, but go on, go on your church app today and you'll have all the chapters at one click. And you'll be able to read your Bible and, and do all these wonderful things. But how many of you all, because you gave last week or today, or you're going to give this week, how many of you all are ready res to receive a special blessing because of your offerings? Then raise your hand. Those of you that are online, as the pastor of this group and this people, I speak the blessing of the Lord, which makes rich over your life. May the God of heaven, the Lord, answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend every one of you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. We will rejoice in your salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Well, while you're standing and for those of you that are online every week, we claim out of this world system what we need for our individual families. Is that right? As a church family, we know that we need about $7,500 in order to do what it is God's called us to do. Whatever that amount is, I want you to say this out loud with me as we claim what we need out of the world for this week. All right, say it out loud. <clears throat> we believe we receive no less than $10,000 over the next several weeks. Therefore, we claim out of this world system at least ten thousand dollars to sow devil take your hands off this money 
We bind you in Jesus' name. Loose it and let it go. Ministering spirits, go. Cause the money to come to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Now, um, that's what we're believing to sow on December the 13th, right? So if God speaks to you, if you, you get that in your heart, um, we've made it possible through the church app or text to give. If the money comes in and you don't want to wait for December 13th to come, you can text the amount plus the fund. The fund for this is SEED, S-E-E-D, okay? Text the amount plus the fund, and it'll go for that specific purpose. And 100% of what comes in to the seed fund will cut a check, and we'll take it to the Distinction Church. Praise God. I'm really excited about that. But for ourselves, amen, individually, our families, our church, say it out loud. We believe we receive no less than what we need or want for this week and for this month. Therefore, we claim out of this world system all the money all the money and the resources devil take your hands off our money it will all manifest in the next few days and weeks we bind you devil in Jesus name loose our money and let it go ministering spirits go cause the money to come to us in Jesus name amen amen praise God